Andrew Rhino. I'm a physics student at ASU, and I'm here to tell you why Einstein was wrong. Now, you're probably thinking, what could he have been wrong about? I mean, he had so many different uh, equations that he wrote, different theories. What was wrong? Well, it's probably the most famous one that he ever wrote, E equals mc squared. You might not recognize this because it has an extra factor on the bottom, which is the Lorentzian factor. And basically, if you take a look at it, you'll see that the v squared is over c squared, and if v is higher than c, then the equation blows up and it's bad because you get an imaginary number and all that. So basically, all that says is that nothing can go faster than the speed of light. Basically, all of modern physics is <clears throat> uh, from that entire theory, special relativity. But this is the opera detector, and it's in Italy. Now, a month ago, many of you probably heard that there are neutrinos that possibly went faster than the speed of light. Uh, they were sent from CERN, which is in Geneva, Switzerland, home of the LC, LHC. And then tau neutrinos, which you can see up here are part of the standard model, uh, were detected at going 60 nanoseconds faster than the speed of light. Um, now, if you don't know what the standard model is, it's basically just a huge table or table of particles that make up uh, the universe. This is a summary of the opera results, um, and so far there have been 80 published papers talking about the error and possible theories for why they achieved this result, but uh, none have really explained it. So was he actually wrong, or is this just another failed experiment and everyone thinks it's right? Uh, a lot of physicists think it's that there is no error so far, so they're going to retest it and see if he actually was wrong. Now I want to bring up Michelson and Morley. Uh, if you haven't heard of this experiment, in the late 1800s, these two physicists knew that sound had to go through air in order to propagate, so you can hear, just like I'm talking to you through air right now. They wanted to see if the same thing happened to light. So they set up an experiment, and you can see the diagram right here. Basically, they take one light source, split it into two, and then depending on what time both of them came back to the detector, they can know whether or not there was a thing called the luminiferous ether. And what they found was that there is none at all. It, light can gavel, go through a vacuum and doesn't need anything to travel through. So they were completely wrong. Everything about their experiment was wrong, but it wasn't a bad thing because we found that there is no ether. <laughs> so now there's the LHC in CERN. And basically the entire purpose of this multi-billion dollar project is that um, to find the Higgs boson. And the Higgs boson is essentially is what um, gives everything in the universe mass. It's part of the standard model, it's just another boson, because there are already W and Z bosons that give um, the weak and strong interactions. Uh, so the Higgs boson is important because it will tie the remaining forces together and give us the holy grail of physics, which is um, been searching for since Einstein's paper. But what if the Higgs doesn't exist? Basically, if the Higgs doesn't exist, then we have to rewrite all our theories that incorporate the Higgs um, in order to find some theory that works. And that's basically the scientific method. We come up with theory, we test it, and if it doesn't work, then you come up with something else. We all learned this in grade school. Uh, so the scientific method works because Einstein came up with his theory and we're testing it right now. Uh, so <laughs> hopefully you should be able to read that, okay. Um, and this is true because a few weeks ago we were hanging lights in our house and I kept touching it and it kept shocking me and I kept touching it just to see if it would shock me. Um, so scientists kind of retest things over and over again. So was Einstein really wrong? Uh, probably not. Right now we don't know. That's why I put the yet. Um, because scientists being wrong, it's not a bad thing at all. Uh, they come up with theories, we test it. If they're wrong, then we'll just come up with something else. We know one way that doesn't work. Um, if you've seen the na movie National Treasure, they have the quote from Thomas, Thomas Edison, I think, um, about how he found out a thousand ways not to make the light bulb, or I can't remember the exact quote, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so what does the opera result, uh, which is the 60 nanoseconds faster than the speed of light neutrinos mean for physics? It means physics is working. Physicists are coming up with results, peer reviewing them, coming up with answers, and trying to explain everything. For us, it means like if you have kids and they get something wrong on their physics or science experiment in school, don't discourage them. They should be happy that they come up with a result that does not work. Um, and I'm gonna leave you with one quote from Richard Feynman. It is not unscientific to make a guess, although many people who are not in sciences think it is.
guesses are good. If they're wrong, so be it, because you'll figure out another way that will work. Thank you. Thank you.